Okay, it is 8.30. So good morning, everyone. My name is Tara Healy, and I'm the program director of Mind the Moment. Good morning, the mindfulness program of Harvard Pilgrim Health Plan and Tufts Health Plan. And this is our Thursday morning gathering, and uh, I am opening up the chat. So if you want to open up the chat and go to the drop down menu and select everyone so that we can uh, communicate with each other. And um, I want to just extend a warm welcome to anybody that is here for the first time, uh, that these sessions are fully guided. They are anywhere from, say, 12 to 14 minutes in length. There will be periods of silence throughout, so I'll sort of settle us in, um, offer some guidance in the beginning, give some periods of silence, you know, a few minutes at a time, and I'll just periodically drop in, notice where your mind is. So uh, just, um, it doesn't hurt to say this many, many times. We are not trying to stop the mind from thinking. We're just simply seeing that when a thought has slipped in unnoticed and becomes noticed, that we're no longer gonna continue to follow that narrative. So whatever you know, memory or planning or worry or concern, whatever has slipped in, the minute we see it when we're formally practicing, it's not a problem, It's you're doing it correctly, it's all part of the practice. We're just saying, ah, typically uh, one of the ways to work with it is just to make a soft mental note thinking because in a way in doing that, it's like the culprit has been seen and it weakens it a bit. Uh, allow your body to soften. When thoughts slip in, there's almost always a very subtle contraction in the body. And so, you know, it's it all happens pretty quickly. A thought slips in, you notice soft mental note thinking, allow the body to soften and then just escort your attention back to whatever you're using to help anchor or stabilize attention. That could be breath sensation. Uh, you could use the rise and fall of the belly if you feel it there, the area of the chest, or just the overall carriage of the body. The feeling of the movement of that could be um, what you let your attention land on or anchor to. But you could also use sound. So if there is a sound in your background that's somewhat consistent, you could just open up awareness, receive sound, and uh, track the sound. Um, you have lots of options. You could also take the palms of your hands and rest them on the top of your thighs. And the feeling of that point of contact would be what you um, return your attention to. We just do this over, over and over again as a way to provide some stability and some ease. And ultimately, it helps mindfulness do its job better. It just works better when we have some uh, steadiness of mind. Um, but the other benefit of thoughts kind of coming in is we can see with greater clarity um, what we lean into and what we push away and what our habit patterns of mind are. Um, so it's a it's actually a deep practice of self-understanding among among other things. Uh, but we see more clearly our own mental habits and patterns. Um, but before we start, I want to also say happy summer solstice, first day and longest day uh, of the summer. And um, as I've mentioned in the past, we typically have started with a question as a way to check in, but I, um, I'm switching that up a little bit, not to say we won't do that um, going forward, but um, I have been thinking about just poems or quotes or you know things that inspire me as a way to get started. We'll save about 10 minutes at the end for just Q&A, sharing of resources. So any um, books or apps or podcasts that you've come across that you like. Um, so let me go ahead and read something. Uh, I was Googling summer solstice this morning and I like this one. Um, and we can actually begin the practice now. So. Uh, let your attention really land on these words. So through the ages, the summer solstice has symbolized growth, renewal, and fertility. There is an abundance of energy to be tapped into at this time of year. It's the very best time to harness the magic of the universe. Set your intentions. And um, 
And then a, a friend shared with me another quote by a meditation teacher who I really like. And he says, once you've set a direction for the mind, it will continue in that direction. And that this is a natural quality of mind. If you leave the mind undirected, it can lead to chaos. And so the idea uh, this morning in alignment with summer solstice, in alignment with the idea of setting intentions, um, is that, uh, you know, we're going to, if you just take a moment to think about um, what your intention is in doing this practice, it actually each time will help sort of ground you in why you do this. So, um, you know, taking just a moment to kind of think through what's your intention, even just for this practice, you could even, you could even narrow it uh, that much. And let's go ahead and settle in to a posture that feels like it's going to serve us best this morning. That could be standing, it could be seated, uh, could be lying down, you know, whatever posture feels like it's going to work best for you this morning. Um, your eyes can be open or closed. It really doesn't matter if they're open. Um, gaze downward a little bit just to help remove peripheral distraction. And take two deep breaths, making your exhalation longer than your inhalation. And surrender your weight into the support of the surface that you're on and feel the support of the earth below. Yet maintain an upright engaged posture with a spine that is straight but not stiff. So in a way you're holding yourself in such a way that you're relaxed, but not too relaxed. So you're relaxed but engaged and letting go of all that has happened so far this morning and releasing anticipation of what's to come. Just allowing yourself to fully arrive mind and body in this moment. And bringing full awareness to the whole body. Notice what sensations are occurring. So pulsing, vibration, tingling, temperature. Um, even noticing the points of contact with the back of the body, noticing the clothes touching the skin. So whole body awareness, and really nothing to do, but just aware of the sensations of the feelings uh, that are happening for you now, just receiving sensation. And let's expand awareness to include sound that might be occurring in the room that you're in or even outside of the room. Just making a soft mental note hearing. It's not important what's making the sound, but just tapping into the sense of hearing. And allowing sound to arise and pass as it will in your background. Let's bring awareness, let's narrow that focus a little bit more and begin to see what might work as an anchor for you this morning. You know, something that when the mind wanders, you can just return to over and over again. So as you breathe uh, at, at your own natural pace, you don't need a special breath. But as you inhale and exhale, where in the body do you notice the feeling of the breath most prominently? So rise and fall of the abdomen, belly area, or the chest, or the nostrils, or the carriage of the body, just the movement of the carriage of the body. Alternatively, palms resting on thighs or sound. So just 
kind of look around and see what's going to what's going to work for you what's going to help stabilize something that you can return the wandering mind to and just let the attention rest on those sensations there's nothing else to do and nowhere else to be And noticing where your mind is. Remember, not a problem. Thoughts are going to be coming and going. This is the nature of the mind. We're just making a decision not to follow the trail of thought. So releasing, softening the body and returning to your anchor.
Noticing where the mind is, releasing the memory or planning or worries, softening the body and just simply returning to your anchor. And as we bring this practice to a close, may we be peaceful and at ease. May our hearts be soft and open. May we be safe and protected and our bodies healthy and strong. And may whatever good comes of our practice be for the benefit of all beings everywhere. And so taking a moment to, if your eyes were open or closed, um, just reorient to the room you're in, maybe do a little bit of a stretch. Um, and so uh, just a couple things. Um, Dr. Richard Davidson has a quote that whatever we incline the mind toward, we train. And I love that. It's also kind of connected in with our theme of, um, especially with 
the meditation teacher where he says, um, if we leave the mind undirected, I'm paraphrasing, but if we leave the mind undirected, it'll go, it'll fall into its natural habit pattern. And um, I think I always have felt like one of the one of the greatest benefits of this practice is we get to see our mental habit patterns with greater clarity. We might not always like them or feel good about them, but the idea is we get to see them with greater clarity so that we can really work with them and and keeping the ones that are working for us, you know, calling those forth with a greater frequency. I mean, it ultimately helps us just really align with our own value system. So how we speak and drive and how we listen and, you know, all of these different um, mental habit patterns. Um, one of the huge, the huge benefit is, is we get to see it with greater clarity. And I would also just add that um, it, it's where it bears repeating that we're not trying to create a special state when we're practicing meditation. Um, so often historically, you know, you see somebody in a seated meditation posture and you think calm, you know, they're bringing about calm, but, but that's not the goal of mindfulness meditation. There are actually saying the word meditation is like saying the word sports. There are lots of different reasons and different types, but in mindfulness meditation, we're not trying to create a special state. We're trying to see if we can be in the state we're in, familiarize ourselves with that state. And it's easier with the with uh, pleasant states of mind. It's much harder with the, with the unpleasant, such as a anxiety or jealousy or fear. You know, any of those um, mental states are harder to be with. But the idea is that we're bringing some awareness to those states and uh, really feeling how they show up in the body. So coming out of the narratives about them, but seeing if we can familiarize ourselves with the feeling in the body. And that ultimately we're learning that all of these things have a life, they do their thing and they move. So they have an impermanent nature. That's a huge nugget in this practice is really understanding the nature of impermanence. Um, so, but I wanna also just kind of open it up now. Um, we've got a few minutes to do that. So if anybody, you know, it's an opportunity to share resources that you've come across that you love. Um, it could be a poem or a book or a podcast or, um, you know, an app that you use. And the other purpose of saving time at the end is just to say, how was that practice for you this morning? What did you notice about the nature of your mind? Um, and by the way, it's not just the nature of your mind. You're understanding the nature of everybody's mind. The content and the stories are different, but this is what minds do. And so I um, I always felt like that helped to just kind of amplify my own sense of compassion for humanity, that um, this is what our minds do. And we're, we're learning um, more about that, not just our own um, minds, but it's what everybody's does. It's just our stories are different. Um, yeah. So if anybody wants to make a comment on how practice felt this morning or um, any uh, resources that you'd like to share or questions. So if anybody has a question, you know, it's like fine to pose that question. The comparison meditation. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's funny because I think um, Jennifer and others that, you know, it's like the word meditation over historically has seemed to, to mean like one thing, but there are literally hundreds of different kinds and different reasons one might practice one over the other. And there are meditations that are just aimed at relaxation. This is not that, although having ease, more ease in one's life is a byproduct, but, but this is really a practice of more deeply understanding ourselves, our habits, our patterns, um, 
and working with them in this particular way. Uh, logged in because I'm overwhelmed by several things happening. It was helpful to focus on the sounds in and near my house. Nice, Sharon. Yeah. Um, that is a really helpful practice is to, you know, open up awareness, just open up. And as you are out and about uh, taking in um, nature, which is incredibly restorative, um, and as simple as feeling the wind, you know, tapping into the sense experience, which is what, um, a, again, a core part of this practice is really tapping into our sense experience. Um, start each morning with a daily intention. Yeah, and how grounding it is, Karen. Thanks for that. It's... um. And I think it's a practice too, you know, it is, um, even if you don't think it matters, and I think about this with Sharon Salzberg, the wonderful meditation teacher who's done a lot with loving kindness, She's, she would say, in offering yourself these loving kindness and others phrases, such as how I ended the practice this morning, you don't actually have to feel them, you just have to have the intention for them. And I love that. Um, and so just setting a daily intention um, is super helpful. Uh, and and it, there's also really, I think, which are interesting practices each day that could be tied in with intent. Like um, an intention could be, you know, just as simple as how am I listening today? Just in general, you know, when I'm with a colleague or a parent or a friend or a coworker or a sibling, how am I, how am I going to be listening? Um, and also speaking. A recent episode of 10% half with Zindel and Norm talks about the default mode value, this sense, noticing what is happening on a sensory level. Beautiful. Yeah, Jackie. I, so uh, if anybody has not heard about the 10% Happier podcast, it's a really good one. And um, I haven't heard the one with Zindel Siegel and Norm Farb yet, but I have seen both of them speak and they are absolutely awesome. Um, and I love that term sense foraging because um, so much of our practice is keen into our sense experience. What I'm seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, feeling, and actually mind is in this practice is uh, considered a sense experience. Um, and that's, you know, that's again, that could, that could easily be another intent for the day is, you know, keen into the sense experience as you move through the day. Are there things that, um, and then at the end of the day, are there things that you notice that maybe perhaps you would not have noticed? Um, I wish I could remember which teacher said this, but I love the phrase, just this. Yes, which it, keep in mind when it, it helps me to value my time without expectation. Yes, just taking the time to sit, take a few minutes out of a busy life, whether I'm able to be without distraction or not, and that doesn't matter. I don't have to have the ideal session to get something out of it. Beautifully said, Jamie. Yes, Um a lot of teachers will use that. I feel like it might have been a monk. Um, might be Ajahn Sumedho. No, Suchito, possibly. But just this is such a great reminder. Because that, that encompasses the whole experience, right? The whole experience. So, um, and in and, and a lot of ways, I think it also just helps us be with whatever is happening with more equanimity and balance. So when things are really good, um, that you can fully experience the goodness and the joy of that experience because of the knowledge that that will change. Um, and it's when things are pleasant, um, there's not as much grasping because that is going to change. But it's really helpful when things are unpleasant or difficult. Um, just this, in this moment, just this. And to release expectations, I think this is a really good way to end, actually, Jamie, that we're letting go of expectations of what every practice should be like or feel like. It's, a, it's one thing to set an intention and then just see what happens. Just see what happens. And the idea is to be with 
whatever is happening. So on that note, I just wanna thank everybody for joining me this morning. Have a wonderful solstice. And as we are at the end of the week and moving into the weekend, I wish you luck with practice and remember informal practice, just you know, as we move through the world, um, bringing attention, bringing awareness to whatever is it is that um, we're doing. So, uh, and then we'll see you back here on Tuesday. Okay, everybody, take care.